I heard somebody say today, man, you didn't do anything but beat Jaguars. I mean, that, that, uh, uh, the Matha can beat the Jaguars. My point is a win is a win, right? And we needed this one big time, right? We sure did. Doreen, I'm sorry, who is that man next to you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's his name? He used to work here. Stranger yeah, back. we thought uh -huh. you retired early. We've been holding this thing down. You come back and we have a quarterback controversy already. Thanks, Vance. You can't blame uh, me. That was going to happen anyhow. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so oh, a win is a win. Listen, we know this. You know this. Everyone at home knows this, that Robert Griffin III is going to do every single thing he possibly can to get healthy and get back out on this field. Now, there is no timetable for his return. He's in a cast. He'll begin rehabbing. But we do know that Kirk Cousins, he is the starting quarterback of the Washington Redskins for now. As for his teammates, how do they feel about Kirk now running this offense? But advanced, not only do they have the difficulty of facing the New York Giants, who are coming off a great win last weekend, but they're dealing with injuries. We're talking 17 injuries on this Redskins report. We'll find out in just a few minutes who's in, who's out. I can tell you sources tell me Deshaun Jackson will suit up and will play tonight. Jason Hatcher just warmed up. We saw him getting looked at by the trainers and by the coaches, and so we'll find out if he'll be ready to go for tonight in a few minutes. Chris, it's really more like a dress rehearsal. That's what this game is like because this is the most we're going to see the starters out on the field. Now, just a few minutes ago, RG3 and the rest of the Redskins entered M&T Bank Stadium's starters tonight. They're expected to play at least a half tonight. Deshaun Jackson repping a Nats hat. I like that. It's his second game in Burgundy and gold. John Harbaugh's Ravens undefeated this preseason, just like the Redskins. His counterpart, Jay Gruden, knows this is an important game as far as the roster goes. The offense you're seeing right now, it's very vanilla compared to what you're going to see in week one. They're disguising that right now. Either way, Robert Grimm III and Coach Jay Gruden say things need to change between now and week one against the Texans. Diana, we begin with you. Vance, this is one of those games where you're going to want to watch the first quarter and probably the fourth quarter. Why? Because you're going to want to see Robert Griffin III on the field with his offense, the full offense. They are healthy. They are all in uniform tonight. And you want to check out the fourth quarter because you're going to want to see Johnny Manziel. He is competing for a starting spot for the Cleveland Browns. Now, just a few minutes ago, the Redskins showed up. Robert Griffin III happy to be back at FedEx Field, but even happier to see his two targets, that being Pierre Gosson, who is back in the lineup tonight after missing the first game and Deshaun Jackson making his debut in Burgundy in gold tonight. This will be the first time he will step foot on FedEx field for the Washington Redskins. Jay Gruden happy to have the gang all together tonight. Diane, another preseason game in the books for the Skins, and I'm going to assume all the talk will be about Robert Griffin III over the next few days. Is that true? Yeah, nice guess, Jason. <laughs> I just spoke to head coach Jay Gruden just for a few minutes before he got on the bus. I said, Jay, takeaway right now, what's, what's on your mind? He said, it's a preseason game. We stunk, we did some things, but all of this we can improve on. It is, Vince, you know what's even more exciting? There's no quarterback controversy with Washington. It's the other team tonight that's got this quarterback controversy. Everyone wondering if Johnny Manziel can win that starting spot. Tonight's game will determine that for the Browns. But for the Redskins, they are debuting their offense really for the first time. Everyone healthy, everyone in uniform on offense. So the team is getting ready for this sh short week here. They've had just a few days to prepare for the Giants. Most of that work actually happens during the offseason. The coaches prep for them. But for Kirk Cousins now, he's now the starting quarterback of this Redskins team. This is only his sixth start. And for him, it's all about time management. And it reminds him a lot of his time when he played at Michigan State. I think we like Jay Gruden, don't we? So far, I think, huh? What do you think? Even so with far? the losing record, I say yeah. Yeah, it's early. Yeah. Very good. It's early. I'll give the answer he gives about Robert. Just a lot of time. We still need some time to grow. But so far, <laughs> he seems to like to answer bit. questions. I mean, he doesn't. No, he, doesn't he keeps it real. He definitely keeps it honest. He has no, you know, there's no question I could have asked yeah. him that he was uh, afraid of. Certainly yeah. not. All right. So remember when 47-year-old Jay Gruden was introduced as the new head coach, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed? Some of us were thinking, boy, are you in for a ride? Well, mm -hmm. the head coach tells me the transition has been smooth. He feels like he was perfect prepared and ready for this job. So now nine games in, three wins, Gruden sat down with me to talk about what everyone wants to know. Who's really calling the shots? Is Dan Snyder meddling? What is Mr. Snyder's, um, how active is he in your decision making? Uh, I see Mr. Snyder on game day and then sometimes walking around at practice. I don't see him very often. 
Uh, Bruce Allen, we work very closely together. Bruce has a lot of say in what goes on. And as far as Dan's concerned, you know, I haven't really, we haven't had that issue. Like people think, you know, I was kind of worried that he'd be in my office, call this play, run this. That has not been the case whatsoever. That's not even not close. It it's actually kind of funny to think about him doing that. It hasn't happened yet. Might happen. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I, I've heard of a. <laughs> it's other... his team. I mean, I guess he could do that, right? Yeah. But he hasn't yet. this day be any worse for the Washington Redskins? The morning started off with a bus accident. Then once the team arrived here at the stadium, reports swirled that Robert Griffin III wasn't the leader this team needed. Then the team lost to the Vikings as they get ready to head into the bye week. It was a scary moment, honestly. Um, you know, we, we, we probably had half a second, if that, uh, to react on that bus, and that was the guys in the front. Uh, myself and D.Y. were sitting at the very front, and uh, you know we saw the bus, hit the bus, and we both thought we were going to fly out the window shield. Unique way to start the day, uh, getting ready for a football game when you're five feet from driving off a cliff onto the highway. Um, but uh, I had no excuse for that. But it was a, uh, it was uh, it was experience that uh, could shake a lot of people. To be honest with you, but uh, no excuse. I was just really worried about the, the bus driver. Uh, you know, the window shattered. Uh, you know, thank God he had on the seatbelt. Uh, I ended up in the middle of the aisle in between the seats, but you know, all of us were good. That didn't affect the game. Rattled and shaken, the players hit with another obstacle before kickoff. A national report claiming RG3 wasn't wanted as the starter by his own teammates. It was an amateurish report. It was totally not true. And uh, for anybody who reads that to believe that, they're an amateur. Anybody who reports that's an amateur. Uh, it's totally false. We're not going to let anybody get to us. That's some small-time reporter reporting Coach, you, you. Everybody's looking for a big scoop, uh, but we believe in him. And if you saw what he did today, it's not his fault we lost. You know, it's our fault. It's defensive fault. At some point, you just got to put social media down. You got to just look at what you guys are trying to do. You know, we three hours out of, outside of a game, you hear all these reports. I mean, it is what it is. Nothing is worse than hearing that. I can't really worry about the negativity that's swirling around. Um, you know, someday that'll stop. Now, I truly believe that. I, th I believe someday the negativity will stop and uh, people will try to will stop trying to tear us down from the outside in uh, and make it look like it's coming from the inside out. Out on the field, RG3's return rusty but solid. Instead, the defense couldn't stop the three undrafted Vikings that scored their touchdowns. And as a defense, we got to find a way to get a stop and get off the field. You know, we can't actually often do much more. You know, they gave us the lead multiple times. It was up to us to go out there and get a stop, and we weren't able to do that today. Hey, hat. That's on me, man. Robert Griffin III taking the blame for this loss, but not taking the blame for the drama surrounding this team. Jason Hatcher said that he went up to RG3 before the game and said, "Don't listen to any of the noise. You're the guy we want under center. You." are the leader of the Washington Redskins. In Minneapolis, Minnesota, Diana Rossini, Redskins Final.